It's health and safety gone mad, this. I recently had a fire audit. Well, I refuse to sit on that. Right. <coughs> Welcome to Vintage Key Studio. My name is Dear Grandpapa. Today, I'm going to be showing you a organ that I don't actually own myself, but it's one that's come in and that one that uh, I have mended for somebody uh, and they have kindly allowed us to film it before it gets sent back up next week. Um, this is the Farfisa Combo Compact, made in 1964 to 66. Uh, this thing is uh, very compact and uh, I'll show you at the end but the it's, it's got legs and it knows how to use them and they fold up underneath it uh, and there's a back bit to it as well uh, which um, is part of the case and the everything basically fits inside the box which is why it's called compact so here it is and it's a nice red one when I got this a few days ago it sounded a bit like this But after a bit of tinkering around and replacements of uh, various parts to it, uh, I got it to sound like this. I've forgotten how to do chromatic scale, but you can hear that the C and the D that was um, going before is now mended and is working and there was also actually a bit of a funny funny thing going on with the C sharp as well which I didn't manage to capture on film um, so I'll do a bit of playing and then I'll just quickly show you what I did inside to, to fix it it's got a a uh, volume expression pedal there which is plugged in to the, uh, the organ and uh, it's also uh, got this thing under here. Oh, by the way, that there's a reverb spring on here. If you heard a <laughs> just then, but it's got this knee trembler here, which is um, on the f on first viewing, you would think it would probably be some sort of volume control, but you've already got a volume control there. So why would they put a new one, another one on? Uh, this one is actually uh, a multi-tone booster control which I will show you in a minute when I get to that uh, but it does something quite spectacular to the sound a bit later on so anyway first of all we have uh, the the simple four foot stop of the strings on there if I just turn all the other bits off so Okay, so that's quite nice. Then we have the piccolo. And a flute. And some strings there. This is the eight foot stop of the strings. Trumpet. And then 16 foot strings, which is obviously just an octave below this one. And two octaves, so that's... Although the t tonally they're a bit different. That's, that's more mellow, that one. 
Anyway, and then we have the bass. So that's the basic sounds, and obviously all combined in various different ways. You've got vibrato there, so if we just turn a bit of vibrato on and the blue button. If I press the heavy button, it's gone all heavy, and then we've got slow, and then we've got fast, and then if I switch that off, uh, here we have um, a, a reverb as well. But as you can hear it all, so we've got. And a long. Okay, so the reverb spring is delicately uh, placed underneath the organ here. And you can hear me just vibrating the reverb springs there. If you have a bit of a look under there, it's this thing here, which is suspended by a spring, which is quite unusual for something uh, like this to be so prone, because it's usually inside something uh, and obviously protected, but here it's, it's, it could be quite dodgy, it could get damaged, but anyway, it's, it's all fine. I'll just quickly show you the bass as well, you've got the, the bass end of the keyboard, well, the reason why it's called the combo, because it's sort of like got bass and keys. It, oh, I should also say that there is also, well, it, there isn't one with this particular mod, uh, particular organ unit, but there is also a, a bass uh, foot pedal board uh, that would have come with this as well. As far as I can make out, it's basically, it would be these notes here. Um, and um, so I think the, the, the thing is you can either play them from the from the keyboard, all from on the pedal board, um, and there's three levels of uh, pedal loudness. Basically, you've got the, the the this one here, the piano, and then MF mezzo forte, and then forte. That's Italian, you know. One quite nice thing about this uh, device is that it's got an, a separate output for the bass pedals or the bass keyboard bit. Um, at the moment I've got it, um, there's, a, there's a jack coming out of, uh, from underneath the organ, which is the main output. There's also here a separate output for just the pedals. And there's also a, a, a volume control there for, to get the pedal sound right. And um, this is like a main sort of a master volume control and, and treble and bass as well for the entire keyboard. So, which is quite a, a novel thing. Not a lot of other organs had that kind of thing on there. Certainly, they didn't have a separate output for the bass because uh, our dear friend Don, late friend Don Shin, um, uh, actually had his Hammond C3 redesigned so that it had a separate uh, output for the bass pedals on it. Uh, and he'd obviously got the idea from having a look at one of these. Um, because the problem is if you've got everything going out of one jack or one output, if that's going into a Leslie, you might not want to have the Leslie going, the, the, the bass going through the Leslie because it might sound a bit funny. So you might, might want to have like a, a static bass sound and a, and a whirring everything else. So that's quite a good, good little feature there. Well done, Farfi, sir. So with this you can sort of...
lion butterfly there. I don't know what that was recorded on. Was it one of these or was it something else? Put that in the comments below for somebody to talk about. Because sometimes down there it's a bit sort of like... Hello. No, it's actually not like that at all. It's really good. There's all the really good comments people are leaving. Uh, keep, it, keep it going because it gives, gives us ideas. Gives me ideas. Bad ideas, good, but gives me ideas. Makes me spend money I haven't got. <clears throat> now, I haven't shown the, uh, the green switches. Now, the green switches, from what I can make out, um, are uh, separate to these ones here. So if I just... So you've got these... Um, these ones here, but as soon as you switch off... Is it this one? Yeah. So that one now cancels all these out. Um, and then... Okay, right, now I've worked out what it is. So, um, so this switch here, the all booster, sends these... No, this switch here couples this selection to this selection. So this, this selection works by itself. So if you have the multi-tone booster switch on and the, the whatever, four foot stop on. Now, with your knee trembler, that's quite nice, isn't it? That's like, like a synthesizer. I would use my knee, but my knee doesn't go that way. So yes, so we've got the multi-tone booster here. And then we've got the all booster, which is basically just turns everything on full. Um, and switching these white ones on kind of does Add to, add to the sound a little bit, but I'm not sure that's supposed to, to have any reflection on that. So basically, I think the green section is just by itself um, for, the, for the different kind of this sort of like interesting filter effect. on this because I can't reach that. Well that's a bit of me playing around. Now I might just show you a little bit of the under the neath under the neath bit. I've got my screwdriver out. I'm just gonna take its top off. Generally, you wouldn't want to undo all these screws with it still on. But because I'm a psychopath, that's fine. But I also um, have a vague idea of where the dangerous bits are. Um, OK, so don't do this at home unless you sort of know roughly what you're doing. Basically, the dangerous bits, the really dangerous bits are there. There's still bits here that could catch fire and not, not very nice. 
but that's the mains there. A brief rundown of in, inside. You've got the, the mains transformer going into this box in here, which I won't undo that now, but there's, there's two valves in there for the amplifier section. I have a feeling the, uh, the reverb driver is also powered by that as well. Well, it obviously is powered by that. Everything is all powered by that. I haven't really looked at the, the, the drawings to see exactly how the thing is all wired together because I've been dealing with the, the tone generator really. So you've got power supply, you've got this here which is the, the pedals um, and it's quite good because you can actually adjust the volume of all the individual notes individually which I think is quite nice. Um, and then you've got the this is the the tone uh, as in the filters this is all the different filters this is the circuitry as well for I think for the uh, the multi-tone booster uh, and and that and then these ones here we've, we've, I think this this is the uh, very likely probably the amplifier section there um, and and actually yes the reverb tank driver is probably there as well these three banks of circuits here are the uh, tone generators for, and, and there are 12 tone generators and there's one tone generator for each of the 12 notes. So whereas uh, most organs or organs uh, later than this one uh, would have had one sort of single top oscillator which was then divided down into the you know various notes and then divided down into octaves, uh, this one has 12 oscillators in it, uh, one per card or one per note um, and then each of those tones is then divided down on the same card. Now, the, this came to me with the, the C and the D uh, not working properly. So what I did is I had a, a, a look on the drawings, the schematic drawings, and uh, worked out that the, sort of the main oscillator for both of them was a bit iffy. Various components I had to change. The main ones were the very expensive nowadays, the... Uh, SFT352 germanium transistors, which are, are PNP germanium transistors, um, incredibly expensive because they're old and they haven't made them since the 70s. I did read somewhere that you can actually uh, use sort of similar ones to them and I think the AC125 is a similar uh, transistor which might be slightly cheaper than the SFT352. Um, they're lovely old things. Let me just go and get one. I'll show you. They're lovely old-looking things, and they've got little dots on them to show to tell you which part of the uh, which leg is which. So let's have a look. So this is there's one that I removed, and you can see on there. I don't know if you can see that there's a little yellow dot on there. And the little yellow dot is the leg, which is the is called the collector. You've got the collector, the base, and the emitter. C B E. So the so the collector is the dot one. Um, they're not always all the same on all transistors, so if you happen to be using transistors, don't always assume that, because for some stupid reason they they change the way the legs came out. Um, here is a one, one of the ones that, uh, I think that one's been removed. That's a spare one I've got from another project. And that one there is, is, is very similar. You can see it, it's, it's not been used. Um, and this one here is the same. It's got the little, ye little yellow dot on it. Some of them have red dots, depending on di different uh, transistors. So anyway, I'll put them back in there. I don't want to mess around with them too much. They tend, as far as I can tell, they tend to be slightly um, dodgy after around about 40 odd years, 50 years, which is around about now. So, yeah, so what I basically did is I just replaced the top, oct octa top octave oscillator um, for each card, um, for the C and the D card, and then um, a few other bits and pieces, some of the electrolytic capacitors, needed doing and a couple of uh, resistors which is quite rare um, uh, but the way that I went about this was I basically looked at the cards and I just went over them first of all 
and sort of just made sure all the solder was all still okay because sometimes some of the components the, the, the solder joints dry out a bit and the, you can see that the, the components are rattling around a little bit so it's good to go over them with a, a tiny little tiny bit of the soldering iron just to make sure that they're still they're all connected sometimes that actually clears pro problems up because you can imagine this thing it's been bashed around over the years and uh, every vibration a tiny piece of solder flakes off and if it get the older it gets the more brittle it is ideally what would be nice is to just completely suck all the solder off and then redo the whole thing and it would probably be as good as new well for uh, until the life of the components runs out it was quite dicey doing this because it you sort of think you fixed it and then all of a sudden something something sort of uh, goes goes weird and the, and the note starts going <laughs> And you think, oh, what's that? Or then the note stops working completely. You think, oh, what's that? And then you realise the wire's come off because you've been looking at one thing and then something else has come off somewhere else. Um, if I could see better, maybe that wouldn't happen. So anyway, that was the, the repair jobby. I, would, I should say, to, to get to these uh, tuning things, you can actually tune it from the back because there's, they quite nicely drilled some holes in the back of this case. Uh, so you can, you can see here, these little um, variable inductors are the, the way that you tune this. Obviously it's not like a, a, a master tuner because all, there's 12 different oscillators. So you have to tune each one individually. But rather than take the whole thing out, you can, I didn't try it, but you can, in theory, stick a screwdriver in there and then tune these ones. So here we have, um, this is A, uh, E, B and F sharp, and then we've got C sharp, uh, G sharp, D sharp and A sharp, and then here we've got F, C, G and D. So that's the, the notes. But if you needed to get into this thing, the way to do it is to uh, obviously take this top part off, which I've already done, obviously unplug the thing, turn it all off, and then underneath there's some um, some little sort of, uh, what do they call them, butterfly, are they called butterfly wing, no, wing screws, wing nuts, wing nut thingies. And undo those bolts, there's, there should be four or five of them, undo them, and then you can basically pull the whole uh, unit out of the, the wooden box and then kind of just balance it on, on top of it to just to get to any parts that you can't reach. But uh, unless you're servicing the part you probably wouldn't need to do that to just to tune it. Rather a nice little keyboard I think and uh, hopefully the, the bit of work I did on it has um, increased its life. <clears throat> Another thing I should say, uh, this, um, this organ, like a lot of analogue instruments, electronic instruments, usually needs a good at least five to ten minutes, maybe more, to warm up. Uh, if it's not been played for a while, um, if, you, if I just I'll hold a note down and then switch the thing off and switch it back on again, you'll, you'll hear that the um, the circuits need a little bit of time to tune up. So, so there we go, I'll turn the, that off. So there's the C, if I hold that down. So that's it, it's, it's sort of gone away now. And then if, when I switch it back on again, you'll hear it kind of, it goes Oh, it didn't go. Because this has, has been on for a good hour and a half now, it's, all the, all the circuitry is all at the right sort of temperature and, and operating voltage and everything. Um, so you can hear that if I switch it off and switch it back on again, it comes back, back on at the same pitch. But earlier this morning when I first came in and switched this one on, it did this. which is an indication that it's, it just needs a little bit of time to warm up. The um, uh, Philly Corder, if you may have remembered, if you've seen that video, that, that when you switch, first switch on, that goes... 
and uh, it's just like all the all the components need a bit of time to just think about it and then they, they sort of jump into action so um what I also find is if you ever switch these uh, these sorts of organs on and the, some of the notes are slightly out of tune, just wait a little bit. Don't 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 sort of go mad thinking, oh my god, it's 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 completely broken because it might just need a, 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 a few seconds to get get with it. I mean, it's how old is it? Sixty years old, for goodness' sake. Let's just put the top back on because it's rather indecent at the way it is at the moment. That's a headphone socket there, by the way. But it's a mono headphone socket, not a stereo one. So uh, if you plug in a stereo headphone, it might behave in a strange way, either coming out of one ear or nothing at all. So if we put the, the knee trembler back in, so that turns, that goes up like that and turns around like that. Okay, and if we unplug the, hang on, I'm just gonna go and switch the, uh, the channels off. So channels are off. Let's undo that. Now this is quite good because it's one of those jacks that's got a, uh, a little clip thing in it, a bit like an XLR. So if you just pull it, it doesn't come out. So you've got to push that up and then pull it out. That's quite useful because on stage you could be rocking away and then all of a sudden somebody treads on the lead and it stops. That actually happened to my dad when he was in the Soul Agents with Don, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, Don was playing his bird organ and my dad tripped over the lead and the whole thing stopped. And I, I don't know if he, he dragged the organ across the room with him or not, but he might have done. Right, so let's undo the pedal. It just pulls out. And then what we need to do, oh, so just take the plug out the back. Standard IEC uh, kettle lead for this one. The panel one out. Okay, right now we are just going to put it on the floor uh, to fold it away. Just before we fold it away, this is a better view of its bottom. I found with this one it's it's uh, much easier to sort this thing out when it's on its side with the keys facing down. I'm not sure what the manual tells you to do, but. Um, so we just undo them. Good design though, look at that. Right, I'll just go up there for a second. Then we've got the, that's the expression pedal. There's the, um, the knee pedal, the multi-tone thing. There's the reverb spring um, in a nice woolly box. That's the plug there for the, for the um, bass pedals that it hasn't got. These are the wing, wing nut bolt thingies that you can, so they're sort of like holding the organ chassis into the, the wooden box. So if we then put this, uh, oh hang on, when you put that on like that you have to make sure that goes in, and that goes in there, and then that folds over like that. Then you do that. Then if we move it back over again. This is the, uh, the lid and this one's got this sort of pouch thing in it. It's got various other bits and pieces in there which I'm not 100% sure where they all go. I did try this earlier that this thing, I don't know if that's supposed to fit there, but that thing does actually hold nicely in there and doesn't damage the keyboard when you put it into the, the box. So uh, that seems to hold. So there's probably like, may, there might have been like a music stand. Yeah, it's probably a music stand missing. Um, I don't know if the pedal, I, I doubt that the, no, the, 
the pedal board wouldn't have been able to fit in there, I don't think. If, if not, then it wasn't quite so compact after all. If it did fit in there, it probably wouldn't have been called the far piece of compact, it probably would have been called the far piece of bloody heavy. Right, there we are. All folded away, ready to be sent back to its rightful owner, which unfortunately isn't me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As ever, please like it and all that stuff and subscribe. And um, I'll see you again in the next one. Do take care.